Trump's legal team was given the names of potential jurors and after Googling them, discovered there were undercover activists trying to sneak onto the jury. If you have found your way onto this jury and the lawyers think that you are impartial, you are either a liar, an actor, or you're a moron. Now, the actual business inside the courtroom yesterday for this trial of Donald Trump involved jury selection. And, well, the jury pool that we're looking at right now voted by over 70 percent for Joe Biden last time around. This is Manhattan, where if you support Trump publicly, well, it's kind of hard to have a social scene. That's how totalitarian the conversation in Manhattan can be. This is why the Trump team wanted to move the trial to Staten Island so there's a little bit of a, a better jury pool to draw from. Not perfect, but certainly better. But nope, we're drawing the jury pool from Manhattan, and it appears that the process has already been corrupted. Jesse Waters on Fox News Channel picks it up from here. Over half of the jury's already been selected. We already know a lot about them and it is hysterical. Before we tell you about them, remember that this is a Manhattan jury. It went 87% for Biden. And the judge who's overseeing the selection process is a Biden donor whose family was paid by the Biden campaign. Yesterday, 50 white women wearing masks fled the courtroom, claiming they couldn't be fair to Trump. Anyone wearing a mask at this point is not an impartial juror. Here's one white woman who works in cybersecurity who was excused. Listen. Did you say you could be unbiased though? I did. It's very difficult for anyone really in this country to not come to this with prior opinions. I think we, we all have prior opinions about the defendant unless you've been like living in a cardboard box. Show me a juror who says they can be unbiased towards Trump and I'll show you a liar. That's why we don't have political trials in America. Fairness is impossible. Trump's legal team was given the names of potential jurors and after Googling them, discovered there were undercover activists trying to sneak onto the jury. One juror couldn't recall any anti-Trump feeling, but when the defense showed him the receipts, he admitted he'd posted on social media, quote, Donald Trump should be locked up. Another juror said he didn't remember posting anything bad about Trump. And then when shown the evidence, conceded to posting a picture that says, quote, Trump invites Thai boys to the White House. Thai boys request to return to cage. Those two radical liberals got caught lying to the court and were almost seated on the jury. This is what Trump has to deal with. Yesterday, Clay Travis was criticized for suggesting Trump supporters get on the jury. So far, seven jurors have been seated. Here's what we know about them. The foreman. Juror number one. He's a salesman from Harlem who was born in Ireland. He used to be a waiter, didn't finish college, and likes anything outdoorsy. He's married with no kids. His wife's in school. He gets his news from the New York Times, the Daily Mail, and some Fox News and MSNBC. Never met anybody who watches both Fox and MSNBC, but okay. That guy's your jury foreman. Juror number two, a nurse from the Upper East Side with a master's degree. She's not married, has no kids, and lives with her fiancé, who works in finance. She gets her news from the New York Times, Google, and CNN. She said two things that really stuck out. One, quote, I don't really have an opinion of Trump, and, quote, no one is above the law. Let me just jump in here because uh, Jesse's not saying it, but I will. A nurse with a master's degree, unmarried, lives in Manhattan, which means really wealthy, with her fiance who works in finance, very wealthy, gets your news from the Times, Google and CNN, and doesn't have an opinion on Trump. Does anyone, that juror should be arrested for perjury. Have you met anyone who doesn't have an opinion on Trump, let alone a highly educated, wealthy 
married with no kids professional in Manhattan who gets their news from CNN, the New York Times, and Google? She's a liar. But this is the problem with trying Trump in a criminal case. Who doesn't have an opinion on Trump? And it's not like this is a cut and dry criminal case where there's some kind of smoking gun or a bloody victim. In fact, it's not even a normal crime. We're trying to determine whether by paying a lawyer who then paid the cash amount for a non-disclosure agreement and then that payment wasn't noted on a federal elections form for campaign finance, whether that constitutes a felony or not. I'm sorry, to draw the conclusion that Trump is guilty in that scenario, you have to have an opinion on Trump. And that's why this entire thing is doomed for failure. And no matter the outcome, everyone will think it was rigged. But Jesse continues with the breakdown on this jury so far. I'm not so sure about juror number two. Juror number three is a young Asian lawyer from Oregon. His corporate law firm features DEI on its homepage. He's single, lives in Chelsea, and was wearing a purple jacket. Okay. He claims he's not super familiar with Trump's other charges. <clears throat> he likes to hike and run and gets his news from the New York Times, the Wall Street Journal, and Google. Juror number four. Hold on. Just so you know, a single Asian lawyer from Oregon who wears a purple jacket to court. They used to refer to that as a confirmed bachelor. Oh, and lives in Chelsea. I forgot that that very important element too. A confirmed bachelor. We'll just, all right. Four is a Puerto Rican who finds Trump fascinating and mysterious. Quote, he walks into a room and he sets people off one way or the other. I find that really interesting that this one guy can do all this. Wow. The guy was actually born in Puerto Rico, lives on the Lower East Side now, and works in IT. He's married and he has grandkids. Wife's a writer. Previously served on a jury, but says he doesn't remember the verdict. He gets his news from the New York Daily News, the New York Times, and Google. Anyway, juror number five. A black woman in her 20s who doesn't follow the news and didn't know Trump was facing charges any charges anywhere. She lives in Harlem. She's a teacher. She's not married, has no kids, and lives with her brother, who's a basketball coach. She gets her news from Google and TikTok. She also listens to Charlemagne the God. Juror number six is a woman in her 20s. If I, if I could just jump in real fast, Charlemagne the God, who does a morning show that is mostly focused on an urban black audience. It's called The Breakfast Club. And uh, one of his listeners had no idea that Donald Trump was even facing charges. As a fellow morning show host, can I just say, I feel Charlemagne's pain because I promise you he's been talking about this on his show. A and honestly, when you do a morning show, you just take for granted that the listeners are barely, barely hearing what you're saying. But still, but still. If you have found your way onto this jury and the lawyers think that you are impartial, you are either a liar, an actor, or you're a moron. And no offense to juror number five, but you had no idea Donald Trump was facing any charges of any kind. You fall into the latter camp. You would be a moron. Again, no disrespect intended. Who works for Disney. She made the courtroom laugh because she wanted to know if the trial would be over before September because she's a bridesmaid in her sister's wedding. She's not married, has no kids, and likes to dance. She lives with three roommates and gets her news from the New York Times, Google, Facebook, and of course, TikTok, and says she doesn't have strong feelings about Trump one way or the other. <laughs> okay. Juror number seven is a middle-aged, balding white guy with a tan. He lives on the Upper East Side, and you guessed it, another lawyer. 
whose firm is big into DEI and ESG. He's originally from North Carolina, married with two kids, and his wife works at a bank. He gets his news from the New York Times, the Journal, the New York Post, the Washington Post, and he listens to NPR. So that's the jury of Trump's peers so far. The fate of a billionaire real estate tycoon, TV celebrity turned 45th president of the United States is in the hands of New York City lawyers, teachers, and Disney workers who like to dance and get their news from the Times, but swear they can be impartial. Let's not forget, they also pretty much all said they got their news from Google, which is in fact not a news service. It's a search engine that aggregates news of their choosing and of their selection based on their bias. Be afraid, very afraid. But as you know, because this is a criminal trial, a unanimous verdict is needed for a conviction, which means it only takes one. It just takes one jury to hang the jury, to keep them from reaching a verdict. It can be 11 to 1, and that vote could be 11 to 1 from the beginning to the very end of the deliberations, and no verdict would be rendered because, well, of that one juror. And that's what's keeping lawyer Sonny Hostin up at night. They are never going to find someone that doesn't know about the former twice impeached loser president, yeah. right? No one's, no, they're never going to find that. But what I did find also interesting about my Super Bowl is that um, the legal teams will be checking the jurors' social media profiles to see if they can assess the truthfulness and intention of what they said during voir dire, which is their questioning. And I think that's really, really important because if you start liking Trump's and you follow Trump stuff on social media, are you going to, are, can you be impartial? I don't really think so. And I think what could happen in a case like this is if you have someone, and, and we were talking about this morning, someone named Clay Travis is sort of telling people to get onto that jury. You get one person that sneaks onto that jury with untoward feelings, that person can hang that jury. How do you and sneak that's, onto a jury? Be, you have to be called. Well, you lie. You lie. You say, yeah, that's I hate is. Trump. I, I, but I can be impartial, I and I this than that, and then all of a sudden, that's the, the person. Who are they going to find the jury of his peers? How many? You know, uh, it's pretty fascinating because that's quite a reveal that Sonny Hostin just gave without knowing it, which is usually how they reveal things. Uh, she just said, you know, how, how does a Trump lover get onto the jury? Well, by saying I hate Trump. Think about that for a second. If you say during the voir dire that you love Trump. You're not going to get on the jury, right? Because Joy Behar just said, how could a Trump lover get on the jury? Oh, no, no, no. The way a Trump lover gets on the jury is to say, I hate Trump. Because if you say you hate Trump, you'll get on the jury. Thank you, Sonny. Thank you for that very important reveal. I guess one thing we can be thankful for is that none of the jurors said that they got their news from The View. You saw one of the dismissed jurors there in the Jesse Waters segment, and I want to show you a little bit more of her. She seems like a pleasant person. Boy, uh, gentlemen, just be happy that your son doesn't bring her home at Thanksgiving and say, meet your new daughter-in-law. Can you share your opinion of, of the former president and, and, and why you felt <laughs> that you could be unbiased? Uh, I'm not a fan. Um, I... During uh, COVID-19, I lived with someone who was immunocompromised, and I think his handling of COVID-19 was uh, abysmal. <laughs> um, I also I have a sister who is adopted from China, and um, the comments he made about China when he was running for president um, made her very anxious, and therefore made me angry. Um, there policies he has supported um, that regard uh, women and, and reproductive health that I do not agree with. Um, and I think all of that needs to be addressed. Ladies and gentlemen, meet your newest congresswoman from New York. I promise you they're trying to recruit her right now. I, lo I love that one of the reasons she doesn't like Trump is because she lived with an immunocompromised individual during COVID-19, and yet she's not angry at China. She's angry at Trump. I mean, I guess it's a miracle that she didn't make it onto the jury. I guess she's just a little bit too truthful. 
Meanwhile, MSNBC interviewed one other potential juror. By the way, can I just pause for a second? <laughs> They're using a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week news platform to stand on the sidewalk of Manhattan to interview individuals who were dismissed from the jury pool. We're now going to spend the next two and a half hours interviewing people who are going to have nothing to do with this trial. And if I'm the network owner, if I'm the CEO of MSNBC, I call my producers into the boardroom. I show them this segment and I say, OK, so what you're conveying to me is there's not enough news to fill 24 hours a day. Well, I see a segment of people regular citizens being interviewed on the sidewalk whose main claim to fame right now is that they will have literally nothing to do with the trial because they've been dismissed. And this is news? You're telling me that there is no longer a need for a 24-hour news channel. That's what you're telling me. And yet here we are, and here we are talking about it. So I guess that's why I'm a, not a network CEO. What was that like answering questions, some about Donald Trump as he is sitting 30 feet from you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just, I. What was it like to answer questions about Donald Trump while he was sitting 30 feet from you? The world needs to know. Although what she says here, actually is a little bit of a revelation because what you're about to see is a human being being confronted with the reality that this monster that has been created on television that they call Donald Trump, that is supposed to be vilified as the new Adolf Hitler, she actually reached the, the revelation, the, the, the newfound realization as she sat there in that moment, she realized that Donald Trump is actually a human being. It was odd. Uh, it it was such an interesting experience because it's I had never seen him in person before, you know. Um, and you you see someone blown up so larger than life on the media for so many years. Um, to see them in person is very jarring, um, and you get the sense that it's like, oh, this is just another guy. And also, he sees me talking about him, which is bizarre. Did you make eye contact with him? Yes. Yeah. Um, At what point? What was that? Uh, I believe right before I started to read off the, the questionnaire and uh, right after I finished, before I got up to go when I was dismissed. Did it add a, another level of nervousness or tension that you felt with him sitting there? I think so. Um, it, it, it made the whole thing feel more real. In a way, um, because I guess when you're on any jury, it's you have elements of that person's future in your hands. Um, so whether it was Trump or whether it was some stranger off the street in Manhattan who I had never heard of before, um, if, if you commit to sitting on the jury, you can change that person's life forever. Well, there you go. That's your breaking news on MSNBC. guys. This was what happened on day two of this trial. This is going to be a long, long process, but we've got each other's back during the whole thing. And hey, listen, MSNBC has got to be grateful that they've got this to talk about, because if they wanted to focus on the presidential campaign and they didn't have the trial of Donald Trump, they might actually have to focus on the border crisis, international affairs, the bonfire of a foreign policy in the Middle East, the continued protracted war in Ukraine, the price of gas, the inflation, the tanked housing market, unemployment, crime on our streets, the fentanyl and drug crisis, the education crisis. And then, oh, maybe they'll get around to Hunter Biden and his crimes and the impeachment process that continues to go in the House. We wouldn't want them to have to worry about actually focusing on the news. So I think it's probably best that they've got this trial going for them.